did cause people to go out to the polls. Of course, to put them guns down and took up that ballot, you know. Right. You know, you can kill as many niggas you want, as long as you don't go to the polls. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Wow, I want to shift gears for a second, man. Jay Prince, mm -hmm. like, to me, you know, he a little older than us, you know. Um, to you, like, all the time he's been supportive, he's more like a, a brother or, or uncle. uncle. Yeah. And and how, what, when was the first time that you met Jay Prince? Like, y'all relationship, I know y'all, like, that's your guy and he's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Texas, so, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm riding. You know, <laughs> when it comes to Texas, that's yeah. my guy. But, um, and the music, the hip hop is crazy for me and him. I got to get with him. But, like, when was the first time y'all you, you you took notice you of him. Jay Prince and you know? Okay, just growing up in hip hop, like when we like me. So when we yeah. started doing shows, I used to pick the groups that used to um that we were gonna have on the shows. Okay, so Ghetto Boys was one of the groups. Like when you, you was a promoter. Yeah, we used to do promotions. Big time yeah. promotion. <laughs> yeah, for then it was. Really, was it fun? Like, like y'all, y'all had the movement going. Like, I'm bringing people to town, and and we go, they gonna be here. Yeah, it was. Fun. Everybody know you for that, Larry. I was, yeah. You know, I was a, uh, I was a kid, but the fact How that we did it? shows, I was what, 19. Oh, 19. Ooh, that boy, 19. I remember when I was 19, so, yeah, Larry. The fact, that was a big time movement. Yeah, I was in college. I would, <laughs> I would pick the groups. I would come back home for the shows what have you so but back then we were doing the shows and we did the ghetto boys and after they came and seen what we had going on because they said everybody they wasn't really doing arena shows not black people okay you know what i mean they had shows but black people wasn't the ones putting on these shows so we had a arena in the city that we used to do shows at and uh you know nothing but black people there and they like oh man so they told jay because jay didn't come at first it was Chief coming. Okay, yeah. yeah Big, Big Chief. Chief. Yeah, so he telling him about what it was and how the love that they got and how they was protected and supported. So it's like, you got to meet Jay. And we kept having him come so in. So you brought so Big, Big he Chief? came. And you know, after, the Ghetto Boys? Yeah. Okay. We used to, we used to do all the... Uh, Good Boy Boys? All the rapper lives roster, pretty much. They, if, if they wanted to bring somebody or they had a new artist, it's like, okay, we go bring... So that was a spot for they can come and help introduce they artists to this market coming to our show. How big was the arena? Man, it was the amphitheater. I I want to say it held. Um, we had to look it up the Chicago <laughs> amphitheater, but it had to hold ten thousand people. You know, they used to do the circus and stuff before I was born there. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been around. They, my mother never really knew about it because as they was, it was there when they was kids, you know? Wow. Y'all packed that thing out? Yeah, we packed it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, Jay, and Jay, when he finally comes up, because I really wanted to get this story, I was excited about it. I was like, man, I'm going to ask him how he really liked when it was, how when y'all first met. And I know he, I definitely want to get into the fact that your father been on the album, but, like, how was it when you linked with him? Like, when you first met him? I mean, it was like you. I was a, a fan of it, so it was just strange that these people that um, I heard the names in the music and, you know, and I'm actually here with them, not just here with them, but actually hanging out with them. Like, yeah. we're sitting there eating and talking and, you know, it was a, yeah, it was an interesting situation. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, I'm here with some people I, Look up to him. We, you know, building the bond, so it was good. Man, I love it, man. I ain't gonna lie, because I know that's that. I mean, I, I remember Jay saying they embraced him in Chicago, and that was a part of that embracing the fact that you was you was promoting, you was out here trying to figure it out, right? Yeah. yeah. And hip hop was huge then for us, man. And it was it was our own, um, you know, it was a family thing. Like my my father was being in jail, like sit down and study stuff and could see the vision and from okay. people that he was talking to. So, you know, he kind of helped, he directed us towards, let's do these shows. Okay. And, and, and speaking of your father, like when, when he first linked with Jay Prince, did you know that he had linked or did no, you? No, he didn't link with, so he couldn't link with him. He was there. It's just that we. Well, I'm talking about how did he, how did they end up? I want to get into this, this, him being on that 1996 and 
like how did he end up being on there? They got me, but they worried about the kids because the youth is more feisty now than it was in the cold game. Cause we so after we after we started doing the shows and we had them a couple times and then Jay finally came, you know, and the bond started from there. He used to be able to talk on the phone because he was okay. in a federal place. Bonnie, these hunks are so cold out this way. They, they don't want to see me do nothing. They won't even let my family make no money. So then, you know, we wound up putting him on the phone. With, he seen who we are and what we had going on. So it was interesting to him. Okay. And, wow, who was this that had these people together like this, had a behavior like this, had the people moving like this? And he... So anyway, he wound up just talking to him on the phone. And that's how the resurrection thing happened. Kept, yeah, we kept going. He used to put our clothing line in the album. Ghetto Boys, where I ghetto prisoners, yeah. Look in the inside of the Ghetto Boys album cover. Order from there, we're going to... Okay. The album covers, like, we just... It was a good relationship. We bonded and we moved forward wherever we could um, assist each other, you know? When you first heard your father on the resurrection and just heard the, I know, I, what, what did you think about it when you first heard it? They pay some attention to what I said because I'm one of them. You know, I've been where they've been. You know, I, I come from where they come from. I think that, um, you know, I was amazed. It's the, that was part of what his message was, and that's who he is. That's dope, and, man. You know, that's part of, you know, kind of how I move forward with that type of thing in my head. And that's how, that's who, that's who I want him to be. That's what his legacy should be, things of, of that nature. Like, it was great. In 1996, he said, you got, we got to go to the polls. You know, I'm moving my butt so they can send me a rebellious nigga. See, I'm telling these young boys to put them guns down and pick up that ballot, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know what I mean? Uh, you know, almost to if you know if we don't do something, it, it's gonna it's gonna really like it's gonna come now. When I our demise, pretty much. Did, you did know, it not, did it not seem like prophecy when you look at oh, man. When you look at our communities and what's going yeah, on right now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's why. That's why. It's so I ain't gonna lie. When I listen at him, I still listen to it. To yeah. be honest with you, it was like a prophecy. It's still touching. You know what I mean? Like it's something that being from the south. You know what I mean? And then hearing something like that. I mean, just for me, I'm, I can only speak for me because, yeah. you know, I listened to that whole album, you know, that, that album, with The Resurrection was a dope album, yeah. you know what I mean? And to hear that, and, and there was just some songs on there, man, Ghetto Boys, some girls, and all. I remember in the 80s, me and Pops would drop in the 70 Sheppy with the drops and slap. Used to bad kind of stuff, man. Uh, it was just a bunch of stuff on there that was relatable and was jamming. You know, yeah. I had two 18s in the trunk. I ain't gonna never forget it. I was banging it out, man. Hey, I had uh, <laughs> I had bazooka tools. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I had punch forty fives on each speaker, man. Yeah. Don't play. You remember them punch forty fives? Mm -hmm. Oh, they were serious. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I had a deep drop when I come through. <laughs> right. I had a uh, I had a little Firebird, man. It had a little. Trunk in the back of the car, the tube sat down in there, so it's like the car really was made to a box almost. Yeah, I cut the trunk out, you know, yeah. or the cutlass. Like, yeah. like you, you could sit in that back seat, but that metal wasn't there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I could only fit two 18s in the back of that thing. Yeah. And I had the two punch 45s, and I had dropped that damn car too low because every time I moved, that old just bounced. <laughs> 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 so I didn't, knew, I didn't know nothing about I had put me some little clamps hey, on the thing. You just do what you want, Man, but you I'm don't tripping. know what you can do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> But that that album is during that time, you know, like, and in in the nineties, man, like that that was those were some great times, man. So it man, had meaning to them, that, you know. It was, music um, was different. It was hip hop, and it had had meaning. They were saying something. It did. You know, they talked about what was going on, but it wasn't just the the downside of it. Like it was some uplifting music along with it. You know? Yeah. Even what? though they talked about what was going on in the streets and what have you, they still it was still some hope in there. It wasn't. Hopeless. It was good music, man. Great music, actually, man. And uh, I know Jay, that's one that I know it stands out, bro. Yeah. It stands out to all of them, Willie D and all. It got to. Because yeah. it was just, he was, man, Willie D was talking some, he was into politics bad. Like, he was the one that, when I listened to it, I mean, don't get me wrong, Scarface was jamming. Gunshots rang out, niggas ducking. What the fuck? Seen this nigga bite the bullet and fucked him up. But Willie D was a political, like, he yeah. was he was on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, 
So yeah. both of them were dope. And and and, and, and that, uh, that dynamic is what kind of put it together. You yeah, know, when you got the same, Bushwick. same, it's not. It's good, but just having that dynamic of one person bring this, one person bring this, one person bring that, it it all go together, kind of like a I, relationship. I gotta ask you, which one? What's your favorite Ghetto Boys uh, song? My favorite Ghetto Boys song. Come on, man, this that's that's it. I'm gonna have to come back to it. Give me a second. Let me think about it. What's your favorite? Oh man, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's a, it, it, that's a that's a hard question to be honest with. You. And then the bad part about that is I don't because there's the so names many of songs though. For real, I just listen. I that's, listen to the music and I don't See, really know the names. I am too. Me too. She's horrible with names. Yep. I, I ain't gonna lie. I, well, I, do the chorus. Ah! <laughs> I messed that up too, man. I'll be in there, hum. You know, when you don't remember the words, you'll start, you'll make up something just to try to make sure you don't uh, mess it up. You know what I'm saying? I so, I mean, you you know, when you think about just, um, you know, like I said, JM coming all the way up here like that, um, music was different. The 90s was different, you know, um, but. Like I said, I never forget the way your father approached that whole situation. For us, when he was talking on the phone, it was it, it put life in our people, man. Yeah, you know that. Even if, with him being locked up, they couldn't lock up the fact that he still could put life, and that did cause people to go out to the polls. Of course, to put them guns down and took up that ballot, you know. Right. You know, you can kill as many niggas you want, as long as you don't go to the polls. I guarantee you. Things we do now cause people to do certain things. I say things. he was robbing the vote before uh, Diddy and them did. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Exactly. That was way before his time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.